All right. On today's show, I welcome on a very special guest. He is, is Jackson Zakan. He is a sophomore forward for UMass Dartmouth men's basketball team. Jackson, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you holding up during these COVID times? Uh, it's been different, definitely, but finally think we're getting a hang of it and adjusting to it. Nice. That's good. Uh, before we get into your basketball career or anything like that, I just want to say congratulations on you know the conference championship win for your team and uh, UMass Dartmouth. That's awesome that you guys were able to get through the season and accomplish that. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. So Jackson, I want to know, how did you get into basketball? I know your family's a big basketball family. How did you get into basketball? I started in about third grade. Uh, I just always had the height, so it just felt like it was the sport for me. And I fell in love with it at an early age, so I stuck with it. That's, that's awesome. Was there like anyone that kind of got you into it or is it, or like a player that you grew up watching that you really loved that you wanted to be like, or? I'm, I've always uh, loved LeBron and uh, Mel, uh, Carmelo Anthony, but not when I first started playing, it really wasn't about that. It was, I just played and then I liked playing. So I stuck with it and ran with it. That's awesome. Are you now, how tall are you? What are you, six, four now? Yeah, six, five. I like to round up a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> probably, probably six, four and a half. <laughs> we'll round up. I, everyone's got to do it, right? It's NBA players exactly. to do it. Yeah, that's right. How tall were you in like the third grade when you started picking up the basketball? I couldn't tell you. I know in sixth grade, I was about 5'8". Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. That's that's ridiculous. Um, now, what was it like for you growing up playing basketball and, you know, going out through middle school, being 5'8", and then going into the high school, you know, what was that like for you and how did you really start to develop and fall in love with the game itself? Uh, I think I think it really happened, the jump from my sixth grade to seventh grade year, or actually probably sixth to eighth grade. I was playing with like five or six teams a year either through middle school or travel or AU, whatever it was. That's when I really started to fall in love with it. And I felt I saw my game improve. That's awesome. And realized, and it, realized what it took. That's great. That's that's really great. And you started taking it more serious in the, on those yeah. times. And then yeah. you, so did you play for the Middlesex, Middlesex Magic in uh, middle school or who did you play for in middle school then kind of? Uh, in middle school, I played for the Rhode Island Magic for a year. And then I played for the players my seventh and eighth grade year. Nice. Uh, then I played Middlesex as a junior. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's high great. That's, yeah. that's, really, that's really cool. So your high school career, I mean, it's full of accomplishments and everything like that. Uh, you know, what was, first of all, what was your like career like playing in Cumberland and, you know, winning a D2 championship? What was that feeling like for you? Yeah, that's, that's probably, my, actually, it's without a doubt my best memory from high school was winning that game against Shea with Brandon Tyler. Cause I mean, I grew up playing with them since third grade when I started. So it was nice to do that together, the three of us. That that's really cool. What was it like playing with the three of you guys? The guy, all three of you guys grow up. You win a championship together. What's what's that feeling like to kind of like go through that season and accomplish that? It was it was great. It's, I mean, those are two kids I know I'll have in my life forever. Like they've been my best friends for God knows how long. So it was really it was a really awesome experience to share that with them. That's that's so cool. And now uh, now who gets the better of each other in one on one games? I hate to say it, but Tyler tends to get the best of us. <laughs> Come on, you got to get the, you got to just say it's you. <laughs> it, it hurts to say, but you got to give him his credit where it's due. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, and what did it mean for you, too, in high school? Because you also joined the 1,000 Point Club in Cumberland. Yeah. What did that mean for you to join to hit that 1,000 points? Uh, it was a great experience for me, honestly. Um, I didn't realize how close I was when I did get it. Um, so when the, I mean, I got it in an away game, so they didn't stop the game, and I didn't know until after that game that I got it. But they didn't stop until our next home game. We had like a three-game road stretch, so I didn't. They didn't announce it or whatever for like weeks after. But really? yeah, <laughs> but I had no idea when I had gotten it. Oh, that's crazy! So like, did they like did any did everyone know it, or did they just not tell you? Or is that how it worked? Um, we knew I'd gotten it, but to this day, I'm not completely positive what game it really was. I know what game they announced it at, but I'm not positive which game it was that I actually scored the thousand. Oh, that's crazy! That's wild. Yeah. Um, how many how many points did you finish with in your career? Uh, seventeen twenty five. Where are you in the scoring list at Cumberland? Second, right behind Brandon. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he's got me about by about forty. God, that's crazy. Now, yeah. did uh, what was it like? I know you and Brand. Did Brandon stay with you to the end of your career? Uh, so Brandon was two years. So his. The, we, the year we won it was his senior year at Cumberland. Oh, wow. So and then you, me and Tyler were there for our juniors, and then he went to St. George's. Oh, nice. And then you played, ended up playing with Colin 
in yep. your, your senior year? My senior year, yeah. yeah. And what was that like to go up to D1 and kind of, you know, take the lead of the team and play in D1? Um, it was interesting because, I mean, throughout my first three years, I was third or second option, and it was a big step to step up to that lead option, especially going into D1. We didn't really know how we would how we would turn out playing in D1 for the first year of my career. But I think it was nice to go on a little win streak early in the season. Kind of got everyone's feet under them. Yeah, that's great. And that's great. I mean, you guys made the playoffs. Unfortunately, it didn't go the way you would like it to go in the yeah. playoffs. But that's that's awesome that you guys are still able to move up to D1 and make still make some noise in D1. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, and then what was how was it like playing for the Middlesex Magic, uh, you know, your junior year and then your senior year? Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, some of those guys, same thing, or guys I'll talk to for the rest of my life. And uh, Coach Crotty is a great guy. He's always been there. He, to this day, he'll text me, just checking up on me. He, he's it's really a family at Middlesex. That's awesome. That's so that's that's great. And then um, how did you? So what was your recruiting process like? And how did you end up going to Rick? Um, so my senior year, I wasn't planning on playing AU, and RI Elite actually put together a little senior team for the kids who hadn't committed yet. So I played with them and went to a couple tournaments. And I was holding out because I didn't know if I wanted to do a postgrad year or not, but I ended up just going to Rick to stay close to home. Nice, nice. And what was, uh, you were there for a little while. What was the decision to transfer to UMass uh, Dartmouth? Uh, I think, I just don't think I was the right fit at Rick. I don't think, I just don't think it worked out the way I thought it would. So um, about, Towards the end of the season, I had uh, filled out the paperwork to enter the transfer portal for Division Three, and I basically knew where I was going then. But I checked around, looked, talked to some schools, and by the end of the season, I had known where I was going. And why, why you Mass Dartmouth? What was the attraction there that made you really want to go there? Uh, a lot of it was the coaching staff. I think they really believed in me, and they showed they showed that throughout my recruiting process, my freshman year at Rick. Oh, that's that's awesome. That's that's really that's great. And what was your experience? So did you not get a season of 2020 with UMass Dartmouth because of COVID? Is that what happened? Or so we I'll get this year of eligibility back. So I didn't lose a year for here. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. So that's I have really... Three more years left. Oh, that's awesome. That's that's yeah. really great. Um, what was it like? You know, what's your first, you know, playing at UMass in this weird, crazy time too with COVID and everything like that? What was the season like? Um, it was definitely different, uh, especially the mass at practice. I mean, the trainers there, you see guys, they have it under their chin and they come over and tell us to pull them up. And it's difficult. It's different breathing through a mass than it is just breathing without it. So it was definitely an adjustment. And now how excited were you to actually like just to step on the court, though, and like know that you guys were going to have a season? Because I felt like D3 was more up in the air and I think D2 was all more, more up in the air. Yeah, I, I mean, I, as soon as I saw actually Brandon's conference, they canceled their season. I was like, oh, there's no chance we play. And we actually ended up being the only uh, Division Three conference in New England that played, or non-Division One conference that played. I don't even think any D two plays. Wow. It was. It was. I mean, we got really lucky. Uh, two teams actually had to drop out because of COVID, because of when they got when they were tested positive. But it was nice to be able to get a whole season or at least half a season out of it. That's that's yeah. It's awesome. That's great that you guys were able to get the play and you know be able to play, actually get some sort of a season. And it's crazy that, yeah. you know, like you said, D3, the only like D3 or not non-Division one school in New England is able to play. Exactly. It was, yeah, it was cool. That's really cool. Um, And what was it like for you to play? Also, you played with JC Santos as well, too. Yep. What yep. was it like to play with a fellow Rhode Islander? <laughs> so. it, was, it was definitely fun. Um, I've known JC for a while, just through high school. And you know how small Rhode Island is, but I've never really played with him. But we we got real close really fast here, and it was a great time to play with him. That's that's great. And now, what was it like to win the championship over, over Rick? I mean, you guys were supposed to play once, and then it got what happened? Yeah, we, it got rescheduled, right? Yeah, we were supposed to play them. So we played them in the semifinal, and we were supposed to play them on a Friday, and it got rescheduled. I don't. I still don't know why. Something with transportation. I ended up playing them on that Monday, and that was a that was a great game. That's that's awesome. And who'd you beat to win the win the thing? Oh, uh, we beat Keen State. Keen State. And what was it like just to win and beat them and play against them? Uh, that was a lot of fun. I mean, they have two very talented uh, big men there. Who one of them is probably gonna be an All American this year. So wow. it was definitely a big challenge, but it was definitely it was a lot of fun winning that game. 
That's so cool. That's that's awesome. And too bad there wasn't a tournament for you guys. You guys would have been yeah. in the NCAA yeah. tournament, but yeah, gotta repeat. A lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely. Do you, is there a favorite game from this past season that you remember the most for UMass uh, playing at um, UMass Dartmouth? Probably Eastern Connecticut. The second time we played them, uh, that was the best game of my uh, best game of my season. Uh, they had beat us, so we played them on a double header back to or not a double a back to back, and they had beat us the Saturday at their place. And when they came here, we we beat them pretty good by eleven or so. But I had my best game of the season. Did you? Is that when you had a? Is that when you had a double double? Was it sixteen and thirteen? Yeah. Four, uh, fourteen and sixteen. That's 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 awesome. What was that yeah. like like for you? Were you just like lighting it up or just going kind of? Honestly, I, did, I I knew I was shooting pretty well, but I didn't realize how many rebounds I had till after the game because it's one of those stats you don't really notice that you're getting rebounds. Yeah, that's 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 great for you. And what's the one thing that you're looking forward to? Uh, you know, next year playing at UMass? Um, hopefully just being able to start in October, like a normal season, getting a real, uh, getting a real off season in and um, a real preseason as well. Yeah. How weird is it does not play basketball at like when you normally start basketball? Like it, in October? It's, it's really weird. You're just, it's, it's hard to find something to do throughout the day. Yeah. You can only get into so many gyms with COVID going on. So it's tough to find something to do. What do you do to like keep yourself like entertained and like working out and stuff like that? Like, so, what, I actually coached AAU in the fall, and I'm doing that again this spring with uh, the Rhode Island Knights, but it was just a lot of outdoor parks. Any gym I could find, I went to. It was definitely a struggle, but I, I worked hard to get into the gym. That's good. That's that's really good. And what's it like, too, for you to be a coach? You know, your player, you know, you play college, and now you're coaching as well, too, AAU as well. What's the, what's yeah. that feeling like? Um, it's a lot of fun. I, I like it a lot. I mean, that's what I want to do when I graduate, so – it's nice to already get started in it, but it's definitely a lot of fun. That's awesome. I'm having actually having Todd come on uh, next week. I think Todd's coming on yeah. the show to yeah. talk. We're gonna talk with him. He's a good guy. Uh, but that that's great. And now, do you have any pregame superstitions or rituals? Um, not. I did more in high school. We would get subway before every game, but not really in college. No. Nah. I mean, I make sure I eat and stuff, but not nothing crazy. What was the go-to subway? Uh, I always got the steak and cheese. Oh, that's pretty good. That's yeah, it. that's good. That's good. Try to keep it as light as possible and not kill kill myself, but <laughs> I had to get something. Yeah, well, that's that's considered light. Yeah, later. <laughs> 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 I don't know how. Like, did you ever get like cramps or feel heavy when you after you ate that? No, not really. I don't know. I've always had been able to eat really whatever I wanted. I've been lucky. Damn, yeah, you are lucky. Every time I like played <laughs> any sport before I had like any meal, if I ate something big, I'd be like throwing up on the sideline. My, yeah, my freshman sophomore year was really bad. I'd have like a bag of Skittles or something like in the locker before the game on top of the sandwich or a cookie or something. I ate really bad back then. <laughs> oh my God, that's, that's, yeah. that's crazy. And you still didn't, you never got sick or anything like that. No, no. My mind is like absolutely blown. <laughs> it amazes me too. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have you gotta have a stomach of iron or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> or just great conditioning that doesn't affect you in any yeah. way whatsoever. I just chalk it up to the metabolism. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, lucky you, lucky you. Um, now I want to ask you some questions that's just kind of outside of uh, you know basketball and for the listeners to get to know you. Um, do you have a favorite music and a favorite artist? Um, I really only, I listen to rap a lot. I probably, Lil Wayne or Polo G are probably two of my favorite right now. Nice. Who, uh, do you have like a favorite song by Lil Wayne or? Um, probably this, uh, Kobe, it's called Kobe Bryant, but yeah, he just like really released it. So I've been listening to that one a lot. That's great. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Finally, someone I actually know, um, someone I had mentioned, I don't, everyone mentions like these rappers. I don't know. Lil Wayne, I actually know. <laughs> so <laughs> finally I feel like I was like, Oh, <laughs> I can connect to someone on the, on the music as, aspect. That's great. Uh, uh, yeah. Apologies. Pretty good. I've heard some of the music. It's good, good choices. Um, do you play, do you have a favorite NBA team or a favorite player too? I'm um, definitely a Celtics fan, but I've always been more of a player guy, like I'm a LeBron fan, Carmelo. There's a lot of guys I like. I, I love Joel Embiid and Jokic and all those guys, too. Do you think Embiid's going to get MVP this year? I think it depends on how long he's out right now. Yeah. How serious that knee is, but I think he was definitely the front runner for it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy what a difference uh, getting Doc Rivers has made for that six. Yeah, they've, they've been unreal. It's crazy. I, do you think the Celtics are going to make a trade? I'm hoping. 
I, I hope so. <laughs> they need to. <laughs> they definitely, they definitely do. Do you have a finals prediction? Uh, I think it's going to be Nets Lakers. Do, who do you think is going to win? I think it depends on how healthy Anthony Davis is. That's, that's, I think that's... if he's healthy, the Lakers can do it. But if not, there's just too much talent. That's what it's crazy that the Nets picked up Blake Griffin on top of yeah. what, what they have, and on, I think, on top of three All Stars. Yeah, exactly. Just add another one to it to yeah. the mix. And it's exactly. not like he had a bad season at Detroit either when he was playing no, for them. No. He just had some bad injuries, but oh, yeah, it's it's disgusting. <laughs> like how good they are. Wild. We'll see what happens there. Uh, do you have a favorite food? Um, not really. I I like Chinese food a lot, but I don't really have a specific favorite food. Is there a go-to like thing you have to get for Chinese food? Uh, I go to Chinatown on Thayer Street a lot, so I get the General's House chicken and the shrimp on the on the rice. Oh, okay. That's that's my go-to. That's a good choice. I'm def- all right, definitely gonna have to check it out. So, <laughs> uh, and then last question: Do you have like a favorite thing to do outside of basketball? Um, honestly, probably just hang out with friends. I mean, basketball's always been a big part of my life, so I love getting in the gym on off days and stuff like that. But probably just hanging out with friends and relaxing. Nice, that's great. Well, Jackson, so I have all the questions I have for you uh, today. Are there anything statements, questions, or things that you want to add at the end of this? <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm all right. Hey, cool. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, man. I really appreciate your time. Um, hopefully, I can make it to uh, a UMass Dartmouth game uh, next year and be able to they allow people in the well, game. Hope we get some fans in there. Yeah, yeah. I will definitely be there. You can count count me in for sure. Uh, I know JC was on the show too, so got to cheer on the guys who've been on the show. So I really appreciate your your time and everything. Of course. Thank you. Yeah, no problem.